Spuds are here. Welcome, Spuds. Hello, hello. Let's get in the war. Retract, retract. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 18 turret. 18 turrets down, 18 turrets down. Go, big push, big push. Big push. Track, track one, track one. I want to first say thank you so much for 50,000 subscribers. Jumping into the world of Foxhole has been an incredible journey and the amount of support for the content has been absolutely insane. We've actually even blown past 50K and are on the way to 52,000 subs at the time I'm recording this. So thank you again. I'm actually going to be dialing back my streaming for the next few weeks so I can use that time to make more videos. And I'm just so excited to be able to say that. There's a lot to come and I definitely want to make sure they're quality, but enough of that. Thank you guys again and and enjoy the episode. With the introduction of artillery, a whole new wave of combined arms operations opened up across the fronts. Our neighbors in Inlet Shore had stabilized and pushed the Colonials back over the river to the south, while over to the west, the wide open plains of the Deadlands had seen a significant amount of back and forth. Friendly regiments had secured abandoned ward early on in the war, and using the city and its industry as a forward logistics point to push out from, had allowed the wardens to slowly chip away at defenses around Liberation Point, the Pits, and Brine Glen. This type of movement was pretty unheard of back in the east, since the nature of Tempest Island and the early research of concrete had essentially created choke points that made it nearly impossible to break through. With three main bridges around Surge Gate and the Rush, and roughly 80% of the island itself impassable due to sheer cliff faces, the only real option for us was to wait until we had better explosives, which wasn't going to come for a long time. We even tried a naval invasion one night on the least defended beachhead over at the reef, but because of how small the landing area was, we essentially created our very own kill zone and were quickly dealt with. Yeah, I, <laughs> oh, I don't think this is happening. Oh my God, dude. As much as we wanted to take out Tempest, we really had to shift strategies. The Royal Spuds were no longer trying to take the island. Instead, we would keep a lid on it and make sure that the Colonials stayed nice and cozy in their rocky home while we would try and support our brothers and sisters in arms on other fronts. It was the best use of resources since we had a lot of manpower and motivation, but Tempest, at least for now, was uncrackable. The Deadlands was the most reasonable area of operations for us. Inlet Shore was all bridge fights, the Drowned Vale was also a stalemate around Loggerhead, and anything further west would stretch our logistics out a little bit too much. As helpful as it was to simply provide bodies, our main contribution to the front so far had been the massive support of weapons and ammo we'd been able to keep throwing at the enemy. With our main storage facilities in the King and Clan's Head Valley, all sight in Morgan's Crossing, and Axe Head back home in Godcrofts, the Deadlands was just close enough to move material to begin operations while also allowing for logistics to continuously resupply as we pushed out and began fighting. We had selected Brian Glen as our main logistics hub and rally point so we could funnel supplies into the storage depot nearby since the bridges on the south leading into the salt farms were destroyed, making it relatively safe for our crews. Although we had artillery, which we were now very familiar with, the newest addition to our arsenal were tanks. And no, I don't mean little tankettes or armored cars like we had earlier, but actual tanks. The Wardens had researched the Devitt Mark III, a lightly armored and very mobile light tank that fit three crew members and fired 40mm rounds. It looked a little bit like a Sherman from the top down, which I really liked, and although there were heavy assault tanks available, like the Silverhand Mark IV, the Royal Spud's first foray into armored combat would be three fully crewed light tanks with an anti-tank half-track in support. The tanks themselves were shipped from our mass production facility up in the King, assembled in Brine Glen, and then we had to personally load each vehicle with 40mm rounds. It was an incredibly involved process that made you feel that much more attached to the tank, and because it took nearly half an hour to fully load, on top of the hours needed to build and manufacture the thing in the first place, it made you want to be that much more careful with how you operated it. The worst thing you could do is run headfirst into the enemy and lose the tank, making all the time, energy, and resources used all for nothing. In addition to the tank itself, we also had to put on padded boiler suits, a tanker uniform that allowed us to carry our go-to tank kit. A hammer, a set of binoculars, two bandages, a gas mask with a filter, four extra filters, and 60 BMATs. This would allow us to scout ahead, survive gas attacks, repair any damage, and also stop bleeding if we were to take small arms. 
Just as we were finishing up, an Italian silver hand rolled up to rearm at Brian Glynn as well. This tank has two main guns in the front, a 40mm turret with 360 degree rotation and a 68mm hull gun down below. It's based loosely on the French Char II from the end of World War I, and the silver hand was the tank that decided fights. It had a huge health pool and great firepower, so combined with our maneuverable light tanks and the AT half track as well, we were a formidable group. The Italians were on the way to the front as well, so we waited for them to rearm and then set out to our target, the Salt Farms, the last colonial holdout in the Deadlands, and also acting as the main corridor into Umbral Wildwood. We moved out west to join the main assault in Sun's Hollow, and unbeknownst to us, we'd be taking part in the largest armored battle of the war up until this point. Hey, Spuds are here. Welcome, Spuds. Oh, hello, hello. Let's get in the war. As we rolled through the bunker bases and resupply points up to the front, we were welcomed by dozens of friendly vehicles and seemingly endless waves of infantry running out to take on the enemy. We collected ourselves despite being incredibly nervous about what lied ahead and pushed out with the wave of armor around us. There, there's so many freaking tanks here. Are we going more? So there's one southeast. Going. Yeah, we're moving forward, moving forward. Four tanks, four tanks southeast on the south side of the road. Okay. They have AT half track as well. Make that six tanks. Make that have... six tanks. Hey, where are you guys? Yeah, okay, we got got one on the side. Keep pushing, keep the battle line, alright? Keep it, keep going. Back up, back up. Alright, let's peek. Let's peek this. They have one right, we're trying this. to fight right now, distance 65 meters. Okay. Yeah, in front of us, one in front of us. I'm front, 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 keep focused on the tank. Reloading. Push up, push up. Excuse yeah, push up, push up. Make it quick. I don't have a shot. Inside tank rep, can we use the fuck? Back up, back up. Light tank south, light tank south. Light, light tank south, okay. Yeah, enemy infantry in the trench south. Yo, you got him charging southeast, southeast. In the trenches south. All right, let's push with these guys when we're uh, up at 80 or 85. Actually, Shigeru, can you dismount and get double reps? Thanks. Oh my goodness. Yo, right side, right side, southeast. Yo, jump in. We need it. Contact southeast. Direct south. We got light tank. Good track. Yeah, yeah. I deflected right side. Why did we decide to go? It's okay. Just reset. All right. It's okay. Clear comms. We're still in it. Oh, yeah, forward. Back up. We need back up and repair. Back up and repair. All right, let's push up. Uh, Yo, left side, left side, east, east, east. Yeah, yeah. Push him, push him, push him. Good kill, good kill, good kill. Yo, push left side. All right, let's drive forward. Reloading. Push, 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 push. Push with it, push him. Taking the fist. Left, left, left. Yeah, got him, got him. The field gun behind it. Yeah, you got artillery behind it. Focus that one. Artillery in front. Yo, one artillery down. You got one tank on the south road. Yo, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, Shigeru. Back up, back up, back up. Yo, whole line is backing up. We're gonna get behind the uh, the chief Silverhand here and rep, okay, guys? Really good push.
Hold here. Bernie, Shigira, reps, please. If you need BMATs, I can drop. Really good work, guys. We're holding. We're waiting for uh, the silver hand, okay? The Royal Spud's first armored engagement was intense, and unfortunately for us, we learned the hard way that tanks not lined up in formation are easily picked off and dealt with. One of our Devits was unfortunately tracked and killed, but that did look to be the only Warden casualty. With three enemy light tanks, one anti-tank field cannon, and a mobile field artillery piece all destroyed in the assault. Not a bad trade at all, and while we did take a moment to reset, repair, and refuel, we had to keep the pressure on. As we rejoined the front, a stolen Scorpion and friendly infantry were holding our gains, and as much as we wanted to continue the assault, day was quickly turning into night, which made tank fighting incredibly dangerous. With reduced visibility and plenty of wide open terrain to allow for infantry rushes, we elected to stand by until daybreak so no more tanks were lost. This did give us a chance to fall back to the nearby garage up north and repair our armor, which had taken a beating. In Foxhole, armored vehicles have various armor stages that increase deflection and reduce penetration chances, meaning that the stronger the armor, the less often you'll take damage. You can tell what armor stage you're at by simply looking at the vehicle, with the fully armored tank looking shiny and brand new, while a zero armored tank looks rusty and beat up, which we were currently at. With zero armor, almost everything that hit us would do full damage, making us incredibly squishy. To fix this, all we had to do was go to the garage and use 100 BMATs to fully repair. One of the main reasons why a frontline garage was so incredibly important. By the time we returned to the front, we were surprised to hear that we were no longer waiting for daytime, and instead conducting a night assault, with the reason being, hey, if they don't think we're going to attack at night, we should probably attack at night. A thought process that I was totally on board with, so we floored it to get right back into the action. We're moving to us. Yeah, we got him. He's pushing on the road. Southeast. Reloading, reloading. Yeah, reloading. All right, push up with the silver hands to gear up. This is the most glitchy thing I've ever Back up, back up. Back up, Shigeru. We're tracked, we're tracked. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. Get in front of us, Scotty. Run him over, use your pistols. Oh my days, kill him, please. Raise your pistols. I believe in you guys. Two tanks, two tanks at 70 meters at 150. What was that? 150 copies. 85, okay. 150, Yeah, push up with, we're pushing up with the silver hand. Silver hand is dictating when we move. Yo, if the silver hand moves, we move. Left side, we got a rifle, rifle garrison, left side. Yeah, watch them. They're pushing the AT. They're pushing the AT. Misha behind you. Misha behind you. Yeah, take pushing. Push them. Push up to the AT. Push up to the AT. We lost Bernie. And okay, left side, left side. Yeah, left side of him. Squeeze us in the middle of these. Yeah, right to the southeast. Yeah, AT turret. AT turret's down, AT turret's down. Rifle garrison's good. All right, push back in the line. Left side of them, good job. We're focusing rifle garrison. Yeah, I disabled the truck. Yo, is this their BB right here? Yo, BB. Yeah. It is. It's a, it's it's a tier one. Yeah. yeah, tier one. So much meat here, sir. I might get a new thing in case. Spotter, look around. Make sure we don't yeah. have yeah. I'm back. Yeah, I don't see anything. They all deny it. There we go. Nice job, guys. Like a, oh, wait, we got tanks straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yo, big push, big push. 
Big push. Track, track one, track one. Yo, front left, southeast is track. Nice kill, good kill. Yo, keep pushing, keep pushing. Reloading again, reloading again. Yeah, keep pushing, keep pushing. Yo, hold. Yeah, left side, left side. Right side is open, right side is open. Back up, back up, Shigeru. Right. Good hit, good hit. Yo, sticky, sticky, sticky. Got him, got him, got him. Yo, Bernie, you need to jump over to the other tank and grab their ammo. We back up, back up, back up. Hold here, hold here. Hold here. Boy, we have lots of enemies left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ammo in that orange turret right there. Yeah, just pull ammo. Here, can I keep pulling ammo. All right. Pushing you. Oh, close, 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 close. Get in, get in. Oh, wait, you got tank front. Front south. Push, push, push. Push 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 push, 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 push this one. Yo, kill. He's tracked, he's tracked on the uh, south side. Back up, back up, Shigeru. Good kill, good kill. After an hour of fighting, we had destroyed a bunker base and a border base, as well as hundreds of infantry and about a dozen tanks pushing the enemies straight south out of the region and effectively cutting off the salt farms from any reinforcements. Our armor column charged forward into the town as we made a quick pit stop to refuel and rearm and went back to support them. Although it was not nearly as an urban environment as the Battle of Saltingrad, there was plenty of buildings nearby to make it an incredibly dangerous place for the less maneuverable Silverhands. So we took the responsibility of holding down the flanks and clearing out anti-tank personnel while the rest of the assault took down the town hall. It was an incredible feeling being part of such a long battle, but what made it even sweeter was the fact that our tank had survived every minute of it. With the town hall destroyed, the salt farm secured, and friendlies moving in to build up behind us, we would eventually attempt a push into Umbral Wildwood that ended up with us being ambushed in a minefield. Not the ending we would have liked, but by then we had spent nearly four hours in one tank, so we definitely got our money's worth. The region was secured, and the Royal Spuds were on the board once again with another critical role in helping the Wardens secure land out west. Not only were our tank crews part of the largest armored assault in the war so far, but our logistics teams had run non-stop to make sure BMATs and ammo not only kept our tanks rearmed, but the rest of the front's tanks as well. It was a hugely successful operation for our fledgling armored division, and we could return home back to Godcross with our heads held high. The very next day, however, we'd be called back out to the Deadlands, with a huge colonial counterattack threatening to break the region in two. An armored blitz had stormed straight through the western flank, and with the enemies at the gates of Liberation Point, the Spuds would dig in and send hundreds and hundreds of artillery shells in a desperate last stand attempt to hold the line. Oh my god, I'm right next to a tank! Should be enough. I didn't even realize it. Alright, fire one, fire one. Yeah, increase distance, one tick, and fire for effect. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of War 83. A lot of you guys have been asking how to join the Royal Spuds or for you colonials out there, where to simply hang out with everyone and talk some foxhole with the community. So do make sure to check out my Discord link below. And of course, if you did like the video and want to watch more, give this one a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And don't forget to check out the live streams over at twitch.tv slash moidog as we fight the good warden fight day in and day out. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace. I missed the context that we gearing up for uh, Gearing up to go get some. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, Let's brother. Let's go.